Okay, so I thought um, this, you know, we won't spend too long today, but I thought I'd go over the syllabus and answer questions if you have any um, and take a quick look at my camera anyway. And, uh, and that's about it for now. So um, let me just share the screen. Okay, and um, so can you guys see my screen here? Okay, great. Uh, so he, uh, I'm on our uh, homepage on Canvas for this class, and um, you've had experience with Canvas, I, I know, because uh, there's no other way to have classes, or there hasn't been for some time. So uh, recent announcement announcements are up at the top. Um, and I guess I should do this as the student view. So you see what I see what you see. Um, so yeah, announcements and then the syllabus. And I'll go over that in a moment. And then obviously, as you have in all your classes, I assume, over here on the side, uh, assignments, grades, people, syllabus, quizzes, modules, et cetera, right? Uh, so we'll go over the, the uh, syllabus first. So my name is Sita Bhattacharji. Please call me Sita. Um, the best way to get in touch with me is via email. I do try and be diligent about it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I forget. But uh, anyway, do try and check uh, my emails once a day and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, if if I don't, please feel free to email me. <laughs> you know, again, you won't be bugging me. Okay. Um, I do have office hour, an office hour on Thursdays from 1230 to 130 um, via Zoom. And uh, if you're here, you got you got the um, the invitation uh, for it, and it is also located uh, in the modules. Modules. Um, so Zoom meetings here in the modules, uh, office hours invitation right here, and it's a link. Okay. And if that time doesn't work for you, um, let me know and we can try and arrange a time that does work for both of us. Because I know that <clears throat> no time is good for everyone, right? So just let me know. Uh, so welcome to photo four. This course is an introduction to the technical and aesthetic properties of digital photography with an emphasis on the use of the digital SLR camera as a tool for electronic photographic image making. Additionally, you will work at creating efficient digital workflows using Adobe Lightroom as the primary digital darkroom. You will learn the technical aspects of photography as well as how to use the camera as a tool for creating art and expressing concepts, objectives, etc. You are encouraged to employ your aesthetic, intellectual, and emotional concerns as a basis for your photographic expressions. So more simply put, this is an intro to photography. Um, and in this class, we use digital cameras uh, to, to make images, uh, to learn how to use a camera and to make images. Uh, this department does have two other intro classes. Uh, one of them is just shooting with without manipulation, and that's called uh, Photo 7. And the other is Photo 1, which is an intro to black and white photography, which is also lots of fun. Um, and in that, you use a film camera, shoot film, and work in the wet darkroom, the analog darkroom. So we use Adobe Photo, uh, sorry, Lightroom, Photoshop Lightroom, uh, in place of the wet darkroom. And uh, I'll go over what that means in a little bit. <clears throat> as for the rest, you know, we use our lives generally as a basis for the subjects, you know, that we photograph. Um, so I encourage you, of course, to look around and uh, 
see what interests you visually or perhaps things that you know you might not have thought would make good subjects or or interest you might they might okay so look around um so although no previous knowledge of photography or photo editing is required, you must be familiar with such basic computer operations as opening, you all know how to do that, opening, saving documents, file management, et cetera. Um, and as this is an online class, you must have regular access to a computer with high-speed internet and be familiar with using the internet. I can't imagine that you're not. Um, specifically, you must be familiar with Canvas, as all course material and information will be found there. You will also need to be familiar with Zoom, as we will have periodic Zoom meetings. And of course, my office hours will be via Zoom. And as I said earlier, you'll find the invitations for these meetings in the Zoom meetings module on Canvas. So the class requires the use of Adobe Creative Cloud software applications, specifically Adobe Lightroom Classic. And if you don't already have access to this, De Anza College and Adobe will provide access to you uh, for this uh, for the duration of the quarter. You'll need to set up, uh, it's a free account with adobe.com if, if you don't already have one. Be sure to use uh, the email address that you've given the college, that you've given us, when you set up this account with Adobe, okay, so that there won't be any confusion. Right. And so uh, in a week or so, roughly, you should receive an email from Adobe uh, with instructions on how to set things up. Okay. All right. You will need a digital camera preferably a DSLR, a digital single lens reflex, or one that allows you some measure of control over the functions such as aperture, shutter, ISO, and so on, uh, which we'll go over um, in class. Mirrorless cameras, which are, are in some ways a newer type of camera, um, are great, but they can be expensive. So, um, if you're not familiar with the terms and so on, we'll go over them and many other things. If you're in need of a camera, um, the first thing to do, I would say, is to ask friends and relatives if they have a camera lying around that, uh, that you can borrow. Many people upgrade their cameras I'm sure you all know, you know, you know, people who have upgrade fever and have to have the newest thing. Uh, but even even people who don't do that often uh, buy new equipment and still have the older stuff lying around. And for our purposes, and in fact, for most <laughs> general photographic purposes, you don't need the newest and the, you know, the most expensive, the newest equipment um, to make wonderful, wonderful images. Um, I mean, it's not the, it's not the camera that's making the images, it's you. And so as long as you have a camera that functions as it should, and a, you know, a good lens, uh, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't have any problems. So this is, yeah, there we go. That's the plane of focus back here somewhere. There we go. <laughs> this this is my uh, DSLR. It's a uh, it's a single lens reflex camera, and we'll you know you'll see what that means. But um, it's the type of camera that's been used with film for like fifty or sixty years. Uh, so they've just been modified essentially for digital use. So in in place of film, which I'm I'm sure you've at least heard of, um, a digital sensor is put in and it records the information. And then instead of the information being recorded onto film and then you know processing the film and so on, the information is transferred to um, a memory card. So there are different types of memory cards as you'll see um, in the readings. Sorry, it's hard to find that plane of focus. 
is uh, there, kind of. Anyway, memory card. Uh, this is called a compact flash card. There's also another type of uh, memory card that's that's been used. Uh, Sorry, this is an SSD card. There are also compact flash cards that are bigger, but this is the most common type these days. And they come in different capacities, uh, meaning that they have, they can hold uh, different, you know, different quantities of images, um, kind of like hard, they are, they're like mini hard drives or flash drives. And so uh, they come now these days, they have huge capacities. This one, has a capacity of 32 gigabytes. Um, the first one I ever got like 20 odd years ago had, oh, it was like 80 megabytes of capacity. So these days that would hold maybe two images, um, but, but 32 gigs is great. It holds a lot of, of images. You wanna be careful with your memory cards because they can be damaged pretty easily. Um, they're very susceptible to, yeah, to damage either physically through water or something of that sort, um, magnets, <laughs> things like that. So you do wanna get your images off the cards and onto your hard drive or an external hard drive as soon as you can, okay. Um, so the cameras, um, the camera that I would like you to have, whether it's a, an SLR or a smaller, uh, maybe point and shoot camera, is one that allows you to change the aperture, the size of the the opening in the in the lens, the shutter speed, how long the the opening in the back stays open, ISO, which is how sensitive the sensor is to light, which will be gone over. Um, so. Again, you don't have to have an $8,000 camera <laughs> at all, uh, but, but I do want you to have one that has, that can control, that allows you to control these things. And there's a list of some, um, some cameras in the announcements if you, uh, if you are in need. Um, in the short term, you can check out a camera from, uh, from De Anza. So our, our lab uh, is run by a man named Chai, and he is in charge of all of the photographic equipment and the labs and so on. And um, as a member of Photo4, you are entitled to check out a digital camera. You can't keep it for the entire term. You have to, uh, I think you can do it on a weekly basis, um, you know, to allow other students to to have the opportunity to check them out. But if you're in need, uh, at least in the short term, please feel free to to check out a camera. Um, I don't think you can do that this week, maybe not even next, but uh, in the next week or two, you should be able to do so. Um, of course, bring your your ID, your student ID, um, and this is located in the A quad. Uh, A63 or 65 on campus. Okay. okay. Uh, if you have questions about your camera, uh, please, of course, feel free to ask me. And I don't pretend to know every each and every camera model. So if you do have an instruction manual, that would be that would be helpful. But um, again, please feel free to ask about your cameras or anything else. Okay. The recommended text for this class is called Complete Digital Photography by Ben Long. And the readings are listed in the modules on Canvas. But uh, again, it's recommended. It is not, not required. Um, if you want to, to get it, you can purchase either the printed version or the ebook. And the, the uh, site is here, the link to the, to the store is right there. Um, so again, it's recommended, not required, and um, all information for which you are responsible will be found on our Canvas site in the readings and the lectures, etc. Okay, so you will not be tested on anything that is not on 
you know, our class Canvas site. Okay. Okay. Any questions? All good. Okay. So, uh, student learning outcomes. So these are the things that you should be able to do upon completion of this course. Uh, so apply basic digital camera skills to create images and demonstrate a working knowledge of the digital darkroom using Adobe Lightroom. Course objectives, to differentiate between major camera types, analog and digital, and demonstrate knowledge of basic camera controls Two, create and conceptualize images using digital techniques and practices. Three, organize process and output imagery using Adobe Lightroom as the primary digital darkroom. Four, compare and contrast uh, traditional photographic methods with new digital methods in a rapidly changing technological world. Five, Analyze a variety of photographic works to develop, refine, and understand one's thoughts about diverse and multicultural communities. Six, critique classmates' work to understand the visual and communicative value of the medium and articulate individual response and expression. Okay, so that's a mouthful. Um, but more simply put, we'll learn uh, how to use the cameras, how to use Adobe Lightroom um, to, to manipulate our images, to store them, organize them, and, and work on them. Um, look at the work of other photographers, some older, some, some contemporary, um, and to look at your work and the work of, you know, all of you and and to discuss them. Okay. Everyone's favorite topic grading. Um, <clears throat> so the class is primarily, though not entirely, assignment driven. Evaluation or grading will be based upon a written exam, the timely submission of assignments, participation, <clears throat> excuse me, and overall effort. Late assignments are accepted. Um, points may be deducted depending on how late it is, but I'm pretty lenient about that. Um, if you're unhappy with the grade, please speak to me about it. Based on the strength and validity of your argument, I may or may not change your grade, um, but you may redo the assignment for a higher grade. And that's true of all your assignments, except for the last one, which of course is due at the end. So there isn't time to redo it. But for all other assignments, you can, you can redo them for a higher grade. Okay. So I don't do extra credit or things like that, but you can, uh, you can redo the assignments. All exams and projects will be graded on a 1000 point scale and a min minimum, sorry, I can speak, a minimum passing grade is a D minus or 60%. And so the breakdown is, is as you can see right there, um, I do use the plus minus system, which I think is more uh, accurate, uh, but there you have it. Um, there are five assignments, five shooting assignments. The first one is worth 50 points, um, and it's just shooting. It's just shooting whatever you want and then using, you know, those to, to learn how to load them into, uh, into Lightroom. And you're welcome to work on them as much as you want, but that's the purpose of the first assignment and just to get you shooting. Um, the second and third assignments are worth 100 points each. And the fourth and fifth assignments are worth 200 points each. Um, they are technical assignments um, using, uh, using skills that you will read about um, and uh, I guess hear about in the lectures, um, but then putting them into practice for the assignments. Um, they're not, I don't think they're especially complex and um, they shouldn't take too long with the possible exception of the last assignment. Uh, so the, the 
the final assignment, the fifth one, is working on your images in Lightroom and doing certain manipulations that I tell you to do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, then the so that's the total of. <clears throat> pardon me. 650 points for the assignments, 200 points for the uh, final exam or the exam. Well, yeah, it's final, final exam at 150 points for participation, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and then what goes into the grades? I'm sure you have a, a good understanding of what um, what each grade means, but there it is, you know. Um, and then the actual assignments. Uh, so the first one, as I said, is just shooting images, 20 to 30 images. The second, and you may, may or may not know what the heck I'm talking about, but they will become clear, I hope. Uh, certain controls used in photography, ISO bracketing and equivalent exposures. The third one is called depth of field, which is how much of the frame from the foreground to the background is in focus and how we control that. The fourth is color temperature and white balance using uh, and studying different lighting situations. So out in the sun, inside under uh, artificial light, different types of artificial light and so on. And finally, uh, the Lightroom assignments um, the Lightroom assignment, excuse me, where you will work on your images or in, and or images that I provide to you uh, to work on, on specific uh, techniques from in Lightroom, okay. And, uh-oh, those dates are wrong. My apologies, uh, that didn't get changed. The final exam will be, <laughs> And that should be over here also. Um, during finals week from December 12th to December 16th. And um, it will be made a bit, here we go, um, available on Canvas uh, from the 12th to the 16th. And that means uh, you must take the exam sometime between midnight, 12 a.m. on Monday uh, and 11.59 p.m. on Friday. So you have that whole week to do the exam. You can take it twice uh, if you want. And of course the higher grade will be recorded. Um, sorry. All work submitted for this course is to, be a, to have been made for this class over the course of this academic quarter and not therefore prior to September 26th 2022, so last Monday when the quarter started. <clears throat> so you may have images that you made two or five years ago that fit the assignment perfectly. That's wonderful. Um, but please don't submit them for, for the assignments. I'm delighted to look at them if you want to share them and, and talk about them with me. But uh, for the assignments, please make new new images for the assignment, okay? Participation, how do we participate? <clears throat> we participate uh, when we're online. Um, so though we will not be meeting in person, uh, participation, which includes asking questions, making comments and discussing your work and the work of your classmates is still an important facet of education and learning you will be randomly assigned two classmates per assignment whose work you must comment upon. Uh, and there will, be, there will also be periodic Zoom meetings, which though not mandatory are recommended. Uh, so I will have Zoom meetings where we talk about your work um, and uh, you know, hopefully have some discussion about, about your work. Um, I will of course record the uh, the Zoom meetings um, because since this class is asynchronous, we have no scheduled meetings. Um, you're not required to to come to the Zoom meetings, but I I think that they can be very helpful, um, and I also think it's nice to be able to interact with. Uh, I like to interact with you and see you and speak with you, and I think it's nice. 
uh, for you guys to be able to interact with each other, um, at least via Zoom. Okay. <clears throat> Disruptive behavior. The college will enforce all policies and procedures set forth in the standard uh, standards of student conduct. See the catalog. Um, you know, this really doesn't. Uh, this really doesn't apply, I think, to online classes. But you know, in general, hopefully, we're all you know adults and <laughs> will behave accordingly, right? Um, academic integrity. Just one moment. Um, let me go over here. This looks so much nicer. Um, so this is the. This is the syllabus that uh, got this sent to you. I hope you guys got it. Um, the information is the same. I just uh, was able to insert some pictures, you know. Um, so this one here has a little more on participation. Um, there will be a general discussion forum to use on, uh, on Canvas. And I just said that about peer reviews. So what does that mean, writing about your, your classmates' work? Um, you're to make comments and or observations about the images you've just seen. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Why? What works for you? What does not? Why? Um, please don't just say, oh, I really like your images. Are they really nice? Um, Explain and elaborate on that briefly, of course. You don't have to write a whole lot. Um, in addition, if you have any questions to ask uh, the artist, um, this is where you would do it, okay? And a relatively short paragraph should suffice. You don't have to write a, a huge you know, novel on this, just you know, a few comments. All right, disruptive behavior, academic integrity. Uh, simply put, don't cheat, please. Do your own work. Um, there is a uh, there is a code of honor that most schools have. Um, it's you're supposedly expected to be familiar with the honor code and recognize. Uh, that violations of this code are most serious, et cetera. Um, but I think we all have an I, you know, a, a pretty good understanding of, of what's okay, what isn't, and um, you know, cheating is is not okay. Uh, I want to see your work, you know. What's the point if you're not if you're not submitting your your own work? So all right. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns about this or anything else, please ask me. Um, I happen to really like this, this set of images here. Um, it's so, <laughs> it's so uh, perfect for how we can uh, misinterpret, you know, uh, gestures, words, things we read. Um, so you see Prince William of Great Britain from one side looking as if he's flipping some, you know, flipping everybody off. And uh, when seen from the front, he's doing, you know, nothing of the sort. Uh, so I think we should all be, be open to, you know, understanding that we might have misunderstood or that we can be misunderstood, you know. Okay, any questions? You're all good? All right. So uh, just a, another few things. There's a student success center, <clears throat> which um, is really very useful. It's very good. Um, they, can, they can help out with, with tutoring, general tutoring, um, specific tutoring. Uh, they can certainly give advice uh, on, on academic matters. There are also workshops. Um, so the, the website link is right here, um, and please feel free to contact them. Uh, they're open on campus. They're also open, you know, online. 
Um, if you have a disability or have some need of disabled student services, the information is right here. They're also very, very uh, friendly, very helpful. Um, so if you need extra time taking an exam or anything else of that sort, please, please talk to them. Okay, because that can be, you know, worked out and, you know. Okay. Finally, if for some inexplicable reason you want to drop the class, it's not working out for you, you don't like me, which I hope is not true, but whatever, you know, for whatever reason, if you, uh, if you can't take the class or don't want to take the class, please do drop it. Um, it's your responsibility to do so. If you stop attending, um, so I can see who's, you know, how, how often you log on into the class and, uh, you know, how, how often you do and how long you're, you're here. Um, but if you stop attending, uh, I will probably contact you and ask you if everything's okay and if I can help out. Um, but if I don't hear from you, um, I'll probably drop you at some point, but I don't guarantee to drop you. And uh, after a date, which I'll show in a moment, a certain date, you can no longer drop the class. And so after that date, if you have done no class work, you'll get an F, um, which would be terrible. You know, if you if you don't want to take the class, if you can't take it, just drop it because to get an even a W doesn't look so great for withdrawn, but an F uh, is a terrible thing to have on your on your record, if especially if it's unnecessary. Okay, so I of course hope that you will not drop the class and that you will enjoy it, uh, and so on. But if you do need, you know, if you do, if you can't take it or don't want to take the class, do drop it. Important dates. Obviously, we have uh, passed the first day of classes, um, October 8th, which is next, um, I think Saturday, is the last day for adding classes. And the following day, October 9th, is the last day to drop classes uh, without getting a W. So you'll get a refund and there will be no record of your ever having been here if you drop by October 9th. After that date, if you drop the class, you'll get a W and you will not get a refund or at least not a complete refund. Um, on November 11th, there's, there, uh, the school's closed because it's uh, vet, the Veterans Day holiday. Um, as I, uh, November 18th, pardon me, is the last day to drop a class with a W, after which time you cannot drop a class and if you don't, haven't done the work, you would get an F. November 24th through 27th, the Thanksgiving holidays. Uh, no, uh, sorry, I'm misspeaking. December 9th, the last day to request the pass or no pass option. And finally, December 12th through 5th, 16th, final exams. Okay. Okay, and of course it is your responsibility to verify and keep track of important deadlines and so on. And uh, there's a link, link here for the academic calendar. I have put in a schedule and it is um, subject to change, but it's a basic outline of, of how things will go, the order in which uh, topics will be introduced and so on for this quarter. So, um, this past week, uh, we would hopefully you'll be looking at the you know the um, the modules and just going over stuff in Canvas. Um, and this is our Zoom meeting um, for that. Next week, week number three. So work one. Okay, sorry. Week one was all the intro stuff and going through stuff and so on. Uh, this week, you know, again, going over basics, we're having this Zoom meeting um, and we will go, 
and next week we'll start really looking at at Lightroom. So next week, uh, the week of October 10th, um, I'll give I'll do a Zoom meeting and I will record it. And it's an introduction to Lightroom, the basics of, of Lightroom, um, what it looks like and so on. And for you guys, <clears throat> you'll be looking in the modules uh, at the, the first modules, um, the basics, the lens, and controlling the light entering the camera. Okay. And so there are readings. <clears throat> there are readings um, in the modules. There are also lectures. Okay. And class notes. So the notes that I would have written had we been in class and I was there writing on the board. Okay. At the end of week three, the first assignment is due. And that is, as I said, just shooting. You're just shooting images um, so that we can load them into Lightroom. And uh, I'm not gonna go over every week in detail, but, but Lightroom will be ongoing in each week. Um, so the, the following Zoom meeting that we'll have will uh, talk about the next, you know, one of the next modules in Lightroom and how to start manipulating your images. Um, at the end of week five, your second assignment is due. That's the first shooting technical assignment um, and so on. And you can see these and I've, I've indicated more uh, <laughs> Uh, with with more force, I guess you might say, when the assignments are due, you can see there's an arrow and they're in red. Um, again, these are subject to change, um, but this is the order in which we will be doing things. Uh, and I've tried to break up the assignments so that they're not all due at once. These two are pretty close, but that was so that you would not have <clears throat> excuse me, so it wouldn't all bunch up at the end and you wouldn't have anything due during uh, the Thanksgiving holiday week. Um, finally, right after Thanksgiving, um, pretty much is our last week of class. And so at the end of that week, the final assignment is due. And then after that, of course, finals week. Okay. Um, as I said, you can you are welcome to redo any any assignments uh, that you were unhappy with the grade about. Um, but all of those need to be submitted by the the date that your final assignment is due. So that's December 9th. So I don't want uh, late assignments or redos coming in during finals week. They all have to be turned in. Um, by the end of the the quarter, okay. And um, that's pretty much it. So I do welcome truly your questions and comments. Um, I I hope that you will come to my office hours because I'll just be sitting there waiting for people to come. Uh, so please please do come, uh, especially if of course if you have questions or concerns or issues, but you just want to talk. There I am. Here I'll be. Um, this is a photograph of a man named Steve Sasson uh, with his invention, the first digital camera, and it recorded to a cassette tape. I don't know if you guys have ever even encountered cassette tapes. Um, we used to play music on them in the 70s and 80s. Anyway, there it is in 1975. And here is the first camera phone photo taken in 1997 by a, a gentleman in, actually in Santa Cruz, uh, California, which is where I am. I live in Santa Cruz. But uh, there you have it, a picture of this, uh, this guy's um, daughter, newborn daughter. So we've, we've come a long way in a very short period of time. If you are in need of any kind of equipment or, or uh, well, yeah, pretty much equipment. I've given some photographic resources here. The first three are, are local, relatively speaking. 
uh, bear images in San Francisco, Kaufman's cameras in San Mateo, and Photo Express in San Jose. Uh, there used to be many more, but but they've all closed down, which is sad, I think. Um, but the people who work there are, are very helpful. They're very knowledgeable and very helpful. Um, online, of course, there are many, 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 many places you can you can get equipment. These are the two I've listed are two I know personally. Um, and they're it's not that they're little hole in the wall kind of places. They're they're major. Uh, photographic retail stores. Uh, but b &H Photo is in New York City. Um, their store is one entire city block in New York. It's, it's enormous. Um, but their prices are good. They have, a, they have almost anything you could ever think of photographically and, and otherwise. Um, and uh, their prices are good. Um, they're their customer service is fine. They can be a little curt sometimes, but they're fine. Uh, Freestyle Photographic Supplies is down in Los Angeles in LA. And um, I haven't been there recently. I haven't been to B&H that recently either. But uh, but anyway, they're, they also are good. Their prices are good. Um, and uh, the people have been knowledgeable. Uh, and uh, so if you want to order things online, have them shipped. Both of those I find to be good. Right. And I think that finally, that is it. So any questions? Anybody, yeah. Any questions, concerns? No? Okay. No, I think that all made sense. So thank you for going over that with us. Oh, Good, great. I'm happy to, of course. Um, well, thank you for coming. Um, please email me again if you have any any questions or concerns. Um, and as I said, I have an office hour every Thursday uh, from twelve thirty to one thirty. And again, if that doesn't work, then you know, let's uh, find a time that does. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I hope you start, go out, you know, shooting. Go out and shoot and uh, and fool around and see what your camera does, and, you know, and uh, hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. <laughs>